today I want to talk about the multi-screen web. So when I say multi-screen web, people often think about responsive web design and web applications that work on multiple screens. But what I'm really interested about is when the web app I'm using can work on multiple screens at the same time. Who here works with more than one screen on his desk? Okay, more than two screens? We need to talk. <laughs> I've been working with two screens since 2008. I was doing an internship in Cambridge, and my workstation looked like this. I had my brother, uh, brother on one screen and my ID on the other one. Man, having a second screen was, was like a dream to me. It, rem it reminded me of that movie uh, that came out uh, that year, The Dark Knight. You all seen it. You remember this scene with Fox, with all the screens? Awesome, right? Okay, tracking everybody's phone only to find the Joker is totally creepy, but it's just a movie, so. However, the user interface is composed of hundreds of screens, allowing one user to achieve one goal. Now we're talking. So when I got back to France, I had some trouble convincing my boss to, to buy me a second screen just to be more productive. And believe me, I tried everything. But when it comes to spending money, you have to be smarter. So I, talked, uh, I got interested in ergonomics and user studies. I found several research papers to prove my point. Some of them were sponsored by monitor manufacturers. And <laughs> Not all of them, but and measured productivity improvements goes from 9 to 74 percent. So, but it, it doesn't really matter. What matters is that they all agree on one thing. Size matters. So, because I don't want you to tweet that, I've prepared a, a more appropriate statement. A large display surface is a tool for productivity, and I will also add creativity. So speaker advice, always have some thing to distract people while you're drinking. <laughs> About distraction, it's exactly what concerned my boss. He told me, this guy from the New York Times says a second screen is not better. It's yet another distraction. And yes, of course, that's exactly why I said it was a tool. And like any tool, it can be misused, and it's not appropriate in all cases. Yet, with all those, those informations displayed on those screens at the same time, we need to ask ourselves, how can we stay focused? Not so easy, right? Most, most of you are already distracted with the typo on the slide. <laughs> You're thinking, thinking, hey, focused. It's spelled with a C, not a K. So I'm giving you the, the classic uh, French teacher quote. I wanted to see if you were following. And actually, we can only focus on one thing at a time. So when you look at the Red Sea, you, you're not paying attention to the rest. And all magic tricks work like that. So if you want to stay focused on what you're doing with two screens, or if you want to build multi-screen web applications for your users, you have to understand how our mind works. <clears throat> and it's very important to know, to display the right information at the right place and at the right moment. So if you want to know more, I read this book by uh, Jeff Raskin. It's the father of the Macintosh. And it doesn't really cover multi-screen uses, but in the second chapter, we can learn a lot about basic cognitive concepts. It talks about the locus of attention, we only have one, and because of that, we can only focus on one thing at a time, at least consciously. He also talks about our short-term memory, which is pretty limited. It says its duration is estimated between 10 to 20 seconds, and it can handle around seven elements. After reading his book and researching about these concepts, I'm still a web developer. I'm no expert in ergonomics or cognitive psychology. But I got my little idea about what happens when I use my two screens the right way. So I let you judge by yourself. 
with a really simple example. Imagine I'm reading a report a colleague of mine just wrote, and I want to ask him a question by email. Why, why was there um, a decrease on the turnover in September? So I open my email client. It becomes my locus of attention. I'm writing an email. I'm typing some sentences, and what were the amounts I was going to ask to him? I don't remember. It's not in my short-term memory anymore. So <clears throat> it's exactly in those cases where my write screen can become an extension of my short-term memory. I, I'm just typing my email. I'm concentrated uh, on that. And I just have to do a quick look on the right while I'm typing. If I take too much time to look for the information on the right, I'll stop typing, I'll stop typing right away, unconsciously because I'll focus again on reading the, the email to look at, for the information. Once I, I found the information, I can focus back on what I'm doing. And I will probably have to reread what I was typing to, to put myself back into context. So I used my two screens to do two things, write an email <coughs> and write a report. But it was all in order to achieve one goal, ask a question to a colleague. And I stay focused on my work because my two screens were only displaying information useful to achieve my goal. And by the way, you cannot always control what's in your locus of attention. Don't think about pink elephants. Ha, impossible, right? You, you can't really manage that. And it's exactly what happens when you enable notifications from your email client or any other app. Once enabled, you cannot prevent them from distracting you. So when you build web apps, multi-screen or not, please do not take the, the locus of attentions of your users. Remember magic tricks. You can notify people without distracting them. And if you really have a good reason, don't be subtle at all. Remember, they have two screens, so they're not necessarily looking at the one you think. Multi-screen uses are becoming more diverse and more mainstream. Even my boss has a desktop monitor plugged to his laptop now. So people use so-called second screen apps with their phones and tablets while watching TV. And they're also... Um, <coughs> They also treat their television as a second screen with the devices like the Apple TV or the, the Chromecast. Anyone has a Chromecast here? Yeah. Interesting device. At first, I thought it was a cheaper and smaller Apple TV, but when I plug it, when I plug it to my TV, I'm looking, at, I'm looking at a full screen web browser. I have the web inside my TV. How awesome is that? Well, kind of. For now, you have to use non-standard APIs from Google, but imagine the possibilities for your users. Imagine what you can build with all those screens and all those devices. Actually, you don't even need a Chromecast or multiple devices. We've been able to make two browser windows communicate together since the dark night in 2008. So why not put these two windows on two different screens and make them talk to each other. It even works in IE8, so you have no excuse. Therefore, we shall call it the multi-screen web. And I see possible uses everywhere and every day. I've classified them into three types. <coughs> First type of use, one user with at least two screens, computers, phones, tablets. It's pretty good for games, desktop authoring apps like CMS, online, online code editors, and also for entertainment. We talked about second screen apps, but when I'm watching a conference talk on Parlays or InfoQ, I really like the separated video and slides that are synced together, but it's not enough. So I built um, a small demo, which you, you'll see in the discussion track with one of my talks, and I have the slides and the video synced together, but if I open the page twice, one page talks to the other one and says, hey, 
just display the slides and I'll display the video. So I just have to put one of the windows on the other screen and I can enjoy a, a conference talk with my desktop setup. The second type of use um, <clears throat> is two screens with two people, one, each, uh, one screen each. It's pretty good for customer seller situations. I'm currently looking uh, for a new flat and last week the real estate agent wanted to show me some pictures, you know, and he had to turn his, his screen and show me a very convoluted and ugly web app with sensitive data and lost around all those form fields and buttons everywhere. I finally saw tiny pictures of uh, the flat uh, I was interested in. What I want is him to have a second monitor facing me and having the, the ugly web app facing him. And when he clicks on the right buttons, I just want to see a full screen, gorgeous photo of the, the flat I'm interested in. The second, the third type, sorry, of fuse is one big screen for everyone and a detailed screen for the master users. It's pretty good during a conference like Scotland JS, but also during meetings and teaching or training sessions. And that's exactly what I'm doing right now. Since the beginning of the talk, I'm using a, a modified version of Dizzy Slides. It's um, an HTML5 slide deck from Paul Rouget from Mozilla. And like PowerPoint or Keynote, it has a presenter mode that allows me to have some, the, the current slide, the next slide, speaker notes, time, etc. So normally you should see it like this. And everything is synced, so both windows are synced together and have some some special options to verify if the screen works, etc. When I contributed to the, this project four years ago, it was the first time I could make the window on my screen communicate with, with another window. And I was really interested about that. So I pushed the concept further when I was teaching JavaScript. And I made my computer communicate with the computers from the students and the project screen. So I was able to know on my screen which students were not there. I could start some surprise quizzes during the lesson, uh, having the question on the, the project screen, the possible answers on student screens, and I was having live results on mine. So how does it work? How can we make all web pages communicate together? There are several techniques, and it depends on whether on how many devices you have, and whether or not you are you need a server. So, for the cases with a, a server, you can find a lot of talks and articles about web sockets, etc. For my JavaScript course, I used Socket IO to synchronize the students with uh, my computers. For the cases where you have no server and multiple devices you should look into technologies like the Chromecast. What I'm is interested in today is when you only have one device and several screens plugged on it, and you don't really need a server. And I'm interested in that because it's really simple to, to implement, and so you should, you should do it too. First technique, good old window.open. Pop-ups, right? So imagine you have a page, you just do a window that open, it opens a pop-up, and once it's loaded, you can post messages between the two pages. So I'll show you with a, a simple uh, example, code example. Uh, on the main page, I just have to have the URL I will be open, uh, opening. I have a name, it's useful when you want to reopen on the same window, uh, different uh, URLs. And on the features, it's a string, but y you can pass some options. And you just do window.open, and with the window reference, you will be able to send some messages. You can also remember the pop-up can navigate to other origins, and if you don't want, you want to be sure you're not sending messages to other origins, you can enforce it with that parameter. 
And then you can send any JavaScript object you want. It's up to you. Here I'm just sending from here to here. Just go to the next slide. And on, on the... Um, yeah. On the next, the project or pop-up, I just have to listen for messages. It's a classic DOM event. And on the event, I'm able to have the JavaScript object on event.data. So this object is what I invented, and I put it some action. And if it's next, I could maybe call a function. And I have a reference to the source on event.source, so I'm able to talk back and send some messages. The, the second technique is storage event. It's a bit hacky, but it wasn't meant for that, but it's, it's really interesting. So if you have two pages on the same origin, you can set an item in the local storage. And because it is shared among all the pages of your origin, when, the, when you, s you modify uh, an item from the local storage, the spec says you, the browser should send an event to all the pages. So on the other page, if you're listening to the message, the storage events, you can recuperate some, some messages. Like I said, it's a bit hacky, but on the main page, I just say, I want to display slide 42. And on the project page, I'm listening to storage events, and I just have to uh, invoke the function I want to. I also have access to the old value, and it's also really interesting if you only have one screen. You all have connections, login, logout on your web apps. So think about this. You just set item connected user to false, and you can disconnect every pages, every tabs that was opened by your users just by listening to storage events. The th third uh, technique is the shared worker. And again, you have to, to have two pages on the same origin. So by invoking new shared worker, you, you are instanti instantiating a new thread in your browser that can't talk with the DOM. But once it's uh, instantiated, you can have a, a, a link, a port to the, to the worker and back to the page. You just do the same with the second page and you created kind of a bridge, you know? And when you, once you have those ports bridge, you can post messages to the worker and the worker can post messages to the second page. It's just a, a relay. So with a code example, you, with new shared worker, you can instantiate the worker. You start the port, and on the port, you can post messages. On the other page, you do the same, but you're listening to events, message events. And if it's the type you decided, you can just call it go to next slide. But you have to write some boilerplate on the worker thread. It's a, it's a simple script. So you listen to connections, and you have to manually, manually handle the ports in, a, in an array. And on each connection, you start the new port, and you're listening to messages. And once you're receiving messages, you just have to iterate over all your ports, excepting the one that was sending the message, and you can relay the message to all the other windows. Some of these techniques may seem odd to use at the start, but new ones are coming. With the uh, service workers, you can do the same as shared workers, but the, the iteration of our connected clients is already implemented. And with broadcast channel, you can kind of do the same. The really interesting um, uh, spec that is coming is the presentation API. It's a spec on where people from W3C, Mozilla, Google, and Intel work on it. And it's kind, think of it as, as a standard Chromecast API. And it's coming, and I'm really, really excited about that. 
So seven years after its release, when I think about The Dark Knight and this scene, I'm very disappointed. The creepy part is now about tracking people. It, it has become a reality in my country and, and many others. And the cool part with all those screens is not widespread enough, at least it, to my opinion. So remember that a large surface display is a tool. Avoid distractions and display only useful information. You have many, many use to, to invent and to create, and many, many techniques to, at, your, at your disposal to, to use. So I'll let you with a quote from someone we, we owe a lot. The web as I envisaged it, we have not seen it yet. The future is still so much bigger than the past. Thanks very much.